we thought to myself. All right, guys. So this is on to making hard cheeses. Here are general directions for making hard cheeses. You will find many variations in specific recipes, particularly for processing temperatures and pressing times. Okay, here we go. Two to three gallons of milk, two cups of cheese starter, one half teaspoon of liquid rennet or one tablet rennet dissolved in a half a cup of cool water, optional, one to two tablespoons of flake salt, and one half pound of USDA, USDA approved cheese coating. Now, you can also go at it the old fashioned way. They used to use wax. Number one, ripen the milk. Warm the milk to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and add the starter. Stir thoroughly for two minutes. Cover and let it sit in a warm place overnight. In the morning, taste the milk. If it has a slightly acidic taste, it is ready for the next step. You're not using rennet, skip the next step and let the milk sit 18 to 24 hours longer until the curd is formed and the whey is separating. Number two, add the rennet. With the milk at room temperature, add the rennet, stir for two minutes to mix it in thoroughly. Cover the container and let it remain undisturbed until the milk is coagulated, 30 to 45 minutes. Number three, cut the curd. When the curd is firm and a small amount of whey appears on the surface, it is ready to cut. With a clean knife, slice the curd into one half inch cubes. Stir the curd carefully with a spoon. Cut any cubes that do not conform to size. Number four, heat the curd. Place a small container onto a, into a larger one filled with warm water, double boiler style. Heat the curds and whey slowly at the rate of 2 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, at the rate of 2 degrees Fahrenheit, never mind, every 5 minutes. Heat to a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit over 30 to 40 minutes. Then hold this temperature until the curd is developed in the desired firmness and has developed into... Then hold this temperature until the curd has developed the desired firmness. Blah, I'm tired. Keep stirring gently to prevent the cubes and curd cubes of curd from sticking together and forming lumps. Test the curd for firmness by squeezing a small handful gently, then releasing it quickly. If it shows little tendency to stick together, it is ready. When the curd is firm, remove the container. Number five, remove the whey. Pour the curds and whey into a large container lined with cheesecloth. Lift the cheesecloth with the curd inside and let it drain in a, col in a colander or large strainer. Reserve the whey for optional use. When most of the whey is drained off, remove the curd from the cheesecloth. Place, put it into a container and tilt it several times to remove the whey. Four, five Stir the curd or work it with your hands to keep the curd separated. When it has cooled to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and has a rubbery texture, it is ready to be salted. Number six, salt the curd. Sprinkle the flake salt over the curd and mix it well. Once the salt is dissolved and the curd is cooled to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, spoon the curd into a cheese form whose sides and bottom have been lined with cheesecloth. Number seven, press the curd. Place a circle of cheesecloth on top of the curd. Insert the wooden follower and put the cheese form into the cheese press. Start with a weight of three to four bricks for 10 minutes. Remove the follower, then drain off any whey that is collected. Replace the follower and add a brick at a time until you have six to eight bricks. After an hour under this much pressure, the cheese should be ready to dress. Number eight, dress the cheese. Remove the ways and the follower and turn the cheese form upside down so the cheese will drop out. Remove the cheesecloth and dip the cheese into the warm water to remove fat from the surface. Smooth over any small holes with your fingers to make an even surface. Wipe it dry. Cut a piece of cheesecloth, two inches wider than the cheese is thick and long enough to wrap around it with a slight overlap. Roll the cheese tightly using two circles of cheesecloth to cover the ends. Replace the cheese in the cheese form 
Insert the follower and press with 6 to 8 bricks for 18 to 24 hours longer. Number 9. Dry the cheese. Remove the cheese, take off the cheese cloth, and wipe the cheese with a clean dry cloth. Check for any openings or cracks. Wash the cheese in hot water away for a firm rind. Seal holes by dipping the cheese into warm water and smoothing with your fingers or a table knife. Put the cheese on a shelf in a cool, dry place. She could please step back from her. You know, that she wasn't allowed to be that close. Turn and wipe it daily until the surface feels dry and the rind has started to form. This takes three to five days. Number 10, cut, coat the cheese. Follow the package directions on the USDA-approved USDA coating. Coatings are available from catalogs that offer cheesemaking supplies. Number 11, cure the cheese. Put the cheese back under the shelf to cure. Turn it daily, wash the shelf once a week, and dry it in the sun. After about six weeks of curing at a temperature between 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the cheese will have a firm body and a mild flavor. Cheese with a sharp flavor requires at least three months of curing. Curing time depends on individual tastes. Oh, I'm losing down too much. Cheddar cheese. With a little effort in the spring, you can have perfectly ripened cheddar in time for fall apple pies. To make cheddar cheese, follow the basic directions for hard cheese through step 5, removing the whey. Then place the cubes of heated curd in a colander and heat to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in a double boiler arrangement or in the oven. After 20 to 30 minutes, the curd will form a solid mass. Slice it into one inch strips, which must be turned with a wooden spoon every 15 minutes for even drying. Bake or cook these strips at 100 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. At some point, I... Remove from heat and continue with the basic directions beginning at step six. Cure the cheese for six months. Variations. To make flavored cheddars, you can use one to three tablespoons of fresh, chopped or dried sage, one half to two tablespoons of caraway seeds, or one half to four tablespoons of chopped jalapeno peppers, to flavor two pounds of cheese. The amount depends on the degree of flavor you want in the final cheese. Place the desired seasoning in one half cup of water and boil for 15 minutes. Adding water is needed so that it does not all boil away. Strain the flavored water into the milk to be used for the cheese making. Follow directions for cheddar cheese. Add the sage, seeds, or peppers during the salting process. Colby cheese. Colby is similar to cheddar, but is softer and milder, and it's ready to eat without a long curing time. To make a small Colby cheese, add three tablespoons of starter to one gallon of lukewarm milk. Let it stand overnight to clabber, and then proceed with the basic directions for hard cheese through step four, heating up the curd. Sorry, my nose was tickling me. When the curd is heated to the point where it no longer excuse me, shows a tendency to stick together, remove the container from the heat and let it stand one hour, stir every five minutes. Now continue with step five, removing the whey. After, process, after pressing the curd for 18 hours, the cheese can be dried for a day or so and used as a soft cheese spread or ripened for 30 days. Like I had something crawling on me. Romano cheese. Romano is a hard, granular Italian cheese often used for grating. In this recipe, skim milk can be used. Follow the basic directions to step four. Heating the curd. At this point, heat the cut curd slowly to 118 degrees 
Fahrenheit and hold it at that temperature, stirring occasionally until the curd is quite firm. You can tell by touch or by tasting it. Then proceed with the basic directions to step 7, pressing the curd. Follow the directions press, press, pressing the cheese for 18 hours. Then remove the cheese from the form and immerse the cheese in a salt brine. One quarter cup salt dissolved in one quart of warm water and make sure your salt is the Redmond Real Salt. Let it stand two to three hours. That you are to now. During the first stage, stages of the curing process, salt is rubbed onto the surface. For a real Italian Romano appearance, color the coating black and rub the surface of the cheese with olive oil at the end of the curing period. Romano is cured for five to eight months for slicing and one to two years for grating. He feels this is part of that house, and I believe that he's okay. somebody that was just unbelievably stern. He ruled All right. by having an iron fist. Sheep milk uh, cheese. Had no rights. You've probably eaten sheep he cheese, even if you don't know it. Many European gourmet cheeses, such as Ro Roquefort, Romano, and Pecor Pecorino are often made from sheep milk. Sheep milk is ideally suited for cheese making because it contains almost double the solids of cow milk and is high in proteins and minerals. What's wrong? She changed, it shifted, but honestly... You can produce more cheese with less milk. It also contains a higher percentage of butter fat than cow's milk. Collecting enough sheep milk to make cheese takes quite some time for one person with just a few sheep. You can collect, chill, and freeze the milk until you have enough to make cheese. This recipe yields a versatile, low-fat cream cheese that makes a great dip or spread when seasoned with parsley, chopped onion, pressed garlic, pepper, or other herbs. When sweetened, it makes a delicious filling for cake. One gallon of pasteurized whole sheep milk. Quarter cup of cold water, one half rennet tablet. One half cup of fresh commercial buttermilk, one to one and a half teaspoons of salt. Redmond's real salt. Number one, pasteurize the sheet milk by heating it in a six quart stainless steel kettle to 150 degrees, 155 degrees Fahrenheit, and keeping it at that temperature for 30 minutes. Number two, cool the milk to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Number three, pour the water into a small bowl. Dissolve the rennet tablet in the water. Number four, add the rennet mixture and the buttermilk to the cooled sheet milk. Stir gently for 10 minutes or longer. Stop stirring when you notice a slight thickening or settling. If you stir too long, you will get a mushy product instead of a firm curd. Number five, keep the mixture at 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't let it get any hotter or the rennet will be destroyed. The best way to hold this temperature is to set the cheese kettle in a large pan of warm water in which you can add hot water from time to time as it cools. Let the mixture stand until whey. The watery looking liquid covers the surface and the curd breaks clean from the sides of the kettle like gelatin when it is tipped. Number six, cut the curd into one inch cubes by running a long thin knife through it in both directions, right to the bottom of the pot. Cut the strips horizontally by inserting the cheese knife and drawing it across the kettle. Number seven, place a bowl underneath a clean muslin bag or fine colander lined with cheesecloth. Pour or ladle the mixture into the bag or colander. Allow it to drain until nearly all of the whey has been caught in the bowl. Use a cheese press to squeeze out the rest of the whey. If you don't have a cheese press, place a dish on top of the bag and weight it down with a jar filled with water. Number eight, keep the whey in the refrigerator until the cream rises and becomes firm enough to skim off. The cream will have a butter-like consistency. Work it back into the cheese, mixing thoroughly. Save the thin whey to use as the liquid in bread making or feed it back to the sheep. Number nine, once the cheese feels firm, work in the salt. What innovation? Energy have given it new work in the salt. What? In 2010, Christine Quattrochi was reeling from a broken heart. No peeking. Okay. Are your eyes closed? They are closed. Okay. <laughs> I'm confused. She wasn't looking to meet anyone new. You still? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, There's something missing. Yeah. 
This says once the cheese feels firm, work in the salt, and then it says cool dry. It must be keep it in a cool dry. I don't know. I don't know why that's. There's something missing here. Turn and wipe it daily until the surface feels dry and the rind has started to form. This takes three to five days. Oh! Go G. I have to get off the bed. Never mind. That goes to the number nine on the other page. Wow, I'm smart. Anyway, never mind. Okay, number nine. Once the cheese feels firm, work in the salt. Okay, that was sheet milk's cheese. Sorry, I confused myself. I do that often. All right, make your own cheese press. To make a cheese press, you'll need scrap wood, a wooden broomstick, bricks, and a two-pound coffee can. Take a 36-inch piece of three-quarter inch plywood or 36 by 12 inch board and cut the wood to make two pieces about 11 and a half by 18 inches each. Drill a hole about one inch in diameter in the center of one of the boards. Whey will drain through this hole. Drill two holes in the other board each one inch in diameter two inches from the end of the board the holes should be just big enough so the broomstick moves through them easily cut the broomstick into three lengths two pieces 18 inches long and one piece 15 inches long nail each 18 inch piece two inches from the ends of the bottom board matching the holes in the top board Nail the other length to the center of the top board and nail around, nail round cheese flour. Nail the other length to the center of the top board and nail the round cheese flour, a circle of one inch, one half inch plywood cut to a diameter slightly smaller than that of the coffee can. Okay. To the broomstick at the other end. Nail two blocks of wood to the bottom or set the press on two bricks or blocks so you can slide a container under the drainage hole to catch the way. Okay, and I will show you the picture so it's a little less confusing. And I might actually, like, use that picture for the front of this video so you guys can... You know, get a good look at it. And you guys can also stop it and, like, you know, well, take a picture of it or whatever. But I'm, yeah. That's it for the cheese making. So I'll go ahead and get this one up there. And this one was on making hard cheese. So I'll get this one up there. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. Bye, guys.